Welcome, friends. You're listening to the Polka Podcast, the privilege of knowing animals. Hi, I'm Noelle Adams, and I'm so glad you're here listening. Today's episode will be about insects. There's some short stories in there, one even about spiders. It's not creepy, but you'll find it interesting. And I encourage you to stick around and download or subscribe for more episodes. If you're an animal lover or you're just interested in all things nature, I think you'll enjoy it. It's surprising and different, and it's not what you think. So again, thanks for being here and enjoy today's episode. It was Thanksgiving. My roommate, Craig, had brought a woman over, a lady friend, to join him for Thanksgiving, well, along with my myself and my husband. She uh, introduced herself when she came in, and she asked if there was somewhere she could go and smoke a cigarette. And I said, well, absolutely, sure, let's go out on the front porch. And so we did. We, we walked out the front door and sat down on a couple of little patio chairs And I'm sort of, I'm looking under them a little bit before I'm sitting down. She's asking me, you know, what's wrong? And I said, well, you know, I just think it's important that I tell you what's out here. And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, are you, are you afraid of spiders like some people are? And she said, well, you know, I don't like spiders, but I'm not afraid of them. No, they don't bother me that much. I told her what was going on. I said, you know, Laura, we're surrounded by spiders. In fact, we're surrounded by black widows out on this front porch. And she gave me a look that uh, was in disbelief. Maybe I should go back to the beginning and talk about this. One day, it was at the beginning of summer that same year, My husband and I got to cleaning, and we ended up doing this massive spring cleaning, clearing everything out, old pots and chairs and things on the front porch and stuff on the carport. And so after the spring cleaning, I was outside later on that day. I ended up sweeping the porch, and it was just all clean and cleared off, except there was this one piece of plastic. like It was like the back off of a little TV that we had, and it was just leaning against the brick wall. I went to get it uh, and pick it up and I noticed there was a big spider web right underneath it. So I took a double check and looked and pulled it further back and I noticed it was this big, beautiful and scary black widow spider. I had disturbed her a little bit and so I, I jumped back and the plastic fell down onto the concrete. I looked at her and she was big. I could see her from all the way across the porch. And she settled down a minute and I went back a little bit closer to kind of look at her. It was fascinating to see one. I've seen them before, but this one, I don't know, it was pretty close to home and I wondered what I should do. I mean, I wondered if it would crawl in the house Maybe one day if the screen door came open or, you know, I mean, is it a danger? And so I wasn't really sure, but I was willing to get to the bottom of it. And I didn't want to just kill it, um, which I think most people would have done. So I replaced the plastic piece, put it back where it was because it was a hot day. I went inside and did some research and I did this for a couple of days. And I told my roommates about it and my husband about it. And in some of my research, I found out that black widow spiders weren't really that scary. No, you don't want to get stung by one. That's, that's not good. It's painful and damaging. What, what I think I learned, the biggest lesson I learned was that if you don't disturb them, they're certainly not going to come after you or anything like that. So I let the Black Widow stay. (laughs) I 
to put things back out on my porch. I might put a planter, a little mobile planter, a couple of chairs and some other gardening stuff, but not too much stuff. And also I didn't block a black widow. I didn't block anything along that wall. The chairs were kind of out in the middle a little bit. I would check on her quite often. I would see her every couple days. One day I noticed there was an egg sack. That gave me a little scare again. I thought, oh gee, a bunch of little tiny spiders. Maybe I should seal up the front door <laughs> and the windows. How, would they get in the house? Do they want to be in the house? Would they be attracted to the cooler air in the house? I wasn't really sure. I, I just sort of let it go. A little time went by. I went back out on the front porch. I was checking on some cucumbers I had growing in the little mobile planter that I was talking about earlier. I noticed, and I was being careful, of course, always concerned with spiders. I noticed as I was looking around on the plant that below it, sort of webbed around part of the feet, was another black widow spider. I mean, I didn't realize it was another one. I thought it was the same one. And I went back and looked over behind the plastic, and no, she was still there. The mama black widow was still there. So this was, and it was a smaller one too. It was like a teenage size. And then, so I, I just sort of mo moved it back to where it was. And I went about my business, and I, I told my husband later, guess what? There's another black widow out there on the porch. <laughs> Should we do anything about this? And all along, he's not you know, terribly concerned about it. He's always been fascinated by wildlife. He's always been one of those people who catches things like lizards and snakes and frogs and other things. <laughs> and so we left it alone throughout the summer and we got a new roommate that summer. My one roommate moved out and my other, another roommate moved in. And she and I were talking she said, you know, you should really give a name to that Black Widow because you're always talking about it. And I said, well, okay, well, what name did you have in mind? <laughs> and she said, how about Peaches? <laughs> and I remember just laughing hysterically. Okay, we'll call her Peaches. So just a little more time went by and Peaches was still in her spot. She had stayed there all along, months and months. And before long, I began to notice other young black widows around on the porch under things and in tucked in corners and, you know, behind things. And before I realized how this had even happened, because I got busy, busy with my life, I counted and there were something like five black widows making their little web, their little nest around on my small front porch. I was sitting out there one day thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't just sit here willy-nilly. <laughs> I should really be paying really strong attention if I'm going to sit out here. My friends were just thought, you're crazy. I would have killed that thing a long time ago. But I just couldn't. I just thought she was so interesting with her little red hourglass emblem, whatever it is, on her... Um, on her back or her belly or wherever it is and her long black legs and her her bot the body of a black widow you know is just round like a ball and uh, she was just so interesting to keep an eye on and to watch so and I've never really been afraid of spiders so uh, I d you know I let her live I didn't do anything to her and uh, so Thanksgiving Day came along and there was my guest out there on the porch with me and I told her, uh, you know, um, I'm kind of afraid to tell you this, but you know, I forgot, but this porch has like half a dozen black widows nesting on it in different areas. I mean, we're okay sitting right here, but I'm just telling you, so you're aware. And she says, she looks at me and she says, oh, okay. Which was precisely zero other people's response. So that was pretty cool. You know, eventually that interesting Black Widow and all the others sort of left or went, went about their life and did their own thing. I think the mother, Peaches, she ended up dying. And then one day I looked behind there because I hadn't 
seen much movement out of her. I looked behind and then she was gone. So I don't know where she went. Maybe she went off to die. But, um, you know, insects are interesting. Spiders are interesting. I remembered another little story here. I was living, this was back in the mid 90s. I was living in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I lived in a little beach house. It was upstairs where it was, you know, st like stilts. And it was just like two blocks from the ocean. It was really pretty. And one day when my then boyfriend, now husband, came home from wherever we were, we noticed in the yard that there was a praying mantis. You know, you don't see them too often, I guess depending on where you live, but I, I hadn't seen them all too often in my life. And he picked it up and we just thought it was so very interesting. And so we went upstairs to our apartment and went inside. We were looking at it and just observing it for a while. And anyway, then the afternoon wore on and then the night we went to bed. And the next morning went to work, did our thing. And we saw it here and there a couple of times. And I thought, oh, we have to get it out, you know, so that it can survive. My husband was unable to catch it one day. He tried to catch it all over the place, but it was fast. And so, you know, a couple of days went by. And I had thought a lot about the praying mantis. I had thought, well, I need to I need to see, figure out how we can get it outside. Um, I'm not one of those people who wouldn't even squash a fly. Definitely not. But I, I don't see any reason to purposefully kill anything if for no reason. So anyway, uh, several days had gone by. And the next morning it was like a Saturday. And so we woke up and we were going to make a nice bacon and eggs breakfast and go out to the beach. And so we, we made our breakfast and we got ourselves all ready. And then we walked to the door and the sight we saw was astonishing. There was the praying mantis. It was laying in front of the door and it had taken its whatever it has and ripped its own head off. Like it's, I can't even think of what they look like, how they, it's, I don't know if it's its wings or its um, stingers or whatever it has. I don't know what it has, but it had put, it had somehow ripped its own head off, like decapitated itself and killed itself. It committed suicide. I mean, clearly that's what that was. And I remember feeling really, really very bad about that. I remember feeling way out of tune with the life and the needs of a praying mantis. That's for dang sure I did. So, <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was quite interesting. So that is just a couple of my animal stories about insects and spiders. Once my husband and I were camping and we were in Southern Arizona. We were camping at the foot of the Huachuca Mountains. And if you've never been there, and it's not a heavily traveled, heavily visited area, it doesn't have a huge population. It's got kind of a sparse population compared to a lot of parts of the state. It's very beautiful. Uh, the mountains are huge. Um, and the foot of the Huachuca Mountains, there's a road that goes up the mountain. And down there, there's a little campground and the road that goes up the mountain uh, divides between divides. The campground is on one side and the creek or the river that comes down off the mountain from like snow melt. That's on the other side of the little road. And my husband and I spent two weeks there just camping out in our tent with our dog. 
and it was a lovely time it was so beautiful there it was in the early fall and we would go bathe in the creek and we we would always comment to each other at how smooth and clean and fresh our skin and our hair felt from that really I guess really pure water and the weather was really nice it was just a little chilly and cozy at night and my dog loved running around on the campground and there was really no one else there a couple of nights into it we were settling down for the evening it was dark out when someone came to camp for the night and they came in was it a car I think it was a car and I looked out to see what the commotion was and parked in the little gravelly area where you park your cars this car was pulled up sideways to a couple of parking blocks and the guys got out and they pulled out this big white sheet and they covered their car with it okay and then they pulled out these black lights and set them up so that the black lights would have the white sheet as a background and also be sort of shining on the sheets I guess and we just couldn't even figure out what they were up to so we we got our shorts on and shoes and we walked down there to their car and to where they were and we asked them what they were up to and they said well they said we are entomologists and that is if you don't know those are scientists who study insects and they said they came out to Arizona on a road trip and they just couldn't wait to do this and they they wanted to set up their black light because they were trying to attract as many insects and as many different kinds of insects that they possibly could and I think they wanted to take some specimens back with them they were from like some midwestern state and so they said it ta it'll take a few minutes, but if you wait here and you watch, you'll be astonished. I promise. And we looked at each other and we said, oh, okay, all right, we'll, we're game, we'll do it. So we waited for a little bit, and we waited for a little bit. Nothing was really happening too much. Um, and so I went back to the tent and laid down. And then my husband came up to the tent, and he said, come on, you got to see this. So I ran back down there with him. And what I saw was amazing. I had no idea this; these insects were all over. But what he had done, the guy had done, is attracted these exotic-looking large insects. And there were, they were all landed on the white sheet. And the white sheet, I, I'm assuming, enabled them to see with a nice solid outline, you know, each individual insect. So they could tell which ones landed. And so covering this white sheet were these large green beetles that were iridescent. And these, what looked like little tiny birds, these moths, they were there on there too. And there were all kinds of other little beetles and stink bugs and uh, flies and um, just all kinds of things. I, they, might, they might have even caught... a. A leaf bug and a stick bug because I've seen those out there at those mountains there was just all sorts of flying insect and but I remember most clearly I remember the large green beetles and the large hummingbird moths and there were a bunch of other kinds of moths I think I think too so and they were telling us all about each one and it was fascinating it was such a campfire sort of moment that night learning about the insects in nature learning about what what's really around us and some people might not want to know what that is but um it was just so eye-opening i just thought one day i want to do this too i'm going to bring a white sheet and a black light out here and i'm going to attract all the insects and see what we get and i've never actually done that <laughs> but I will say that it was a really cool night and I would highly recommend if you have children to do this because they will be just amazed 
and you'll be amazed right along with them. So the next morning, the guys packed up their stuff to leave and go to another campsite to see what bugs they could find. And they were just on cloud nine. They had never seen such an array of amazing bugs. They had only heard about what could be seen out in Arizona in the mountains. But now they were beginning to see samples of what they could find. And they were just bopping around, super excited. And we just walked up to them and thanked them for the experience and said goodbye. So it was just something I always remembered. You know, I thought, man, that is a cool thing to do. If you want some real serious entertainment slash education and when you're out camping, I would, I would do it. Bring a white sheet and a black light and plug it in somehow and just wait a while. <laughs> anyway, that's it for my stories for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Join us next time for another episode of The Privilege of Knowing Animals. Thanks. <laughs>